what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Following the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis and an outbreak of savage police violence in response to nationwide protests, Calls for change in America's police departments are coming from activists, public officials, and celebrities. But unlike past attempts to reform the police in the wake of high-profile killings of Black people, which often centered on increased oversight or training, this time the demands are far more radical. Defund police departments or abolish them entirely. Efforts to cut off funding for police have already taken root in Minneapolis, where the police department's budget currently totals $193 million. In 2017, the department received 36% of the city's general fund expenditures. Two days after George Floyd's cold-blooded murder at the hands of four uncivilized police officers, the president of the University of Minnesota declared that the campus would no longer contract the police department to provide security for large gatherings like football games. On Friday, a member of the Minneapolis Board of Education announced a resolution to end the school district's contract to station 14 cops in its schools, and community groups such as Black Visions Collective and Reclaim the Block are petitioning the city council to cut the police department's budget by $45 million and reinvest the money in health and non-police safety programs. With other campaigns to cut police budgets underway in cities like Los Angeles and New York, and calls to defund the police gathering stream on social media, I suspect that all will indeed be good in the hood. Now I know what some of you out there thinking, especially the ones with the complexion for the protection. Oh man, y'all absolutely love the police. I mean, can't say that I blame you. They actually look out for you. Damn what they do to other people. Not my business, right? Not my problem. Long as I'm happy and I feel safe. You're really not safe, but you, you know, you feel safe, so you, you feel relatively safe, so you want to look out for the police, right? But I'm going to show you how you can benefit from defunding the police. And this is also for those of you who really don't understand what defunding is, but you just want to see something happen. You want to see something change. So you like, hell, defund, hell yeah, get rid of the ass. I don't give a damn. But let me break it down to you. So when we talk about defunding the police, we're talking about taking money that they receive for going out on these calls and dealing with investigations and stuff like that that's related to domestic abuse, mental illness, uh, drug addiction, and all types of issues out there, you know, even you know, theft, right? So you take that money and you move it into programs, initiatives that serve the people that we know that actually work. There was a time in American history where those programs were getting funded even after school programs were getting funded. And then somewhere down the line, somebody said, that, well, we don't need these programs. So they started taking these programs away. And if you pay attention, you would realize that a lot of additional problems were happening. People were getting locked up in record numbers. America is the most incarcerated country on the entire planet. So we're talking about taking that money that we would give to fund police officers and putting that money into community initiatives. Now, some of you say, well, what, what, what the hell, what's going to happen, man? Somebody steal my car, man. I got to call the police, somebody. I want some, I want, police need to catch him. First and foremost, fam, understand this. The police typically don't show up. I mean, in 97% of the cases, police don't even show up until after a crime has been committed. So what do you need the police for, for that? 
You don't. Additionally, think about this. If your car was stolen and you want to find your car, you want to get the person that stole it, you want to punish them, right? You first, first of all, you have to think about who this person is. And I know we, a lot of us, we don't give a damn who this person is, what their background is or nothing. We just want them to be punished. But that's what we've been going wrong with all this time. You have to think about the person who stole your car, right? You look at that person's record and let's say that person has a number of thefts on their record, but they also have convictions for drug abuse, right? So the person is clear, clearly has a drug problem, right? So if the person has a drug problem, if we had funds to treat our citizens who have drug problems, then our citizens would be less likely to reoffend, right? I mean, this is just common sense, fam. If we have a, a person who has anger issues and we can catch that early, then the domestic abuse rate drops dramatically because people are getting the services that they need. These are human resources. They're getting the human resources that they need to be productive, law-abiding citizens. So we get rid of 95% of the crimes or more. We just get rid of all of that stuff. So we don't need the police. Think about what I'm saying, family. We got all of these police officers. And we're constantly being hit up for more money, more funding, more police officers. But we have more crime. We're no safer today than we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. Think about what I'm saying, fam. Do you feel safer today than you did last year? Five years ago? Ten years ago? I don't think so. I know I don't. I feel like it can go down at any moment. And you can't trust anybody. So why do we have all of these police officers if we're not putting a dent in crime, if all we're doing is just locking people up? Why do we have all of these? We don't need police officers like that. Why do we have all of these police officers if people don't feel any safer? If companies are still losing billions of dollars because people are stealing out of the stores, if banks are still being robbed, if people are still killing, locking people up alone is not doing it. It's not getting the job done. We need those human services. We need those services so that we can pump it back into the community and, and invest that money into people, not police. Because the police is not getting the job done. So in short, we take that money, we defund the police, we pull the police officers out of the schools and we use that money for counselors. So our kids don't even have these issues. We use that money for counseling. We use that money to reinvest in education. And our kids don't have these issues. A lot of our kids are traumatized. They've already said that kids from the inner city have an experience that's similar to a soldier who has been to war. PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, what is it? Post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, yeah. Post-traumatic stress disorder. So they're already saying that's a problem. So you think that locking these kids up is going to solve the problem? Locking their parents up is going to solve the problem? It's not. So... And this is another thing. Where else can you go and not be able to do your job proficiently and still get paid? You can actually insult the customers. You can 
beat up a customer, put him in a chokehold, make him say uncle, kill him if you want to, still come to work, clock in and get paid. Not even worried about getting fired. And then if you do get fired, the other job that does a similar type of work right down the street just hires you. Where else can that happen, fam? Nowhere. The police are out of control because they're actually above the law right now. Defunding the police in America is going to be good for everybody because the police focus their efforts on the marginalized in society, those who are low income, the people who can't really fight back. That means that get the police off people's necks and now people can get up and move around. They can actually fly because they don't have the police knee literally on their neck. It's gonna be good for everybody. And I do also believe that it will improve race relations in America. There is a 1% chance that a police officer will be tried for his or her crime. There is less than a 1% chance that they'll be convicted. Now, if you're a police officer and you know you're dirty, what are the chances that you'll do dirt? Astronomical. Family, they got to go. And I don't give a damn where. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?